You say you're scared to die? Well, I'm scared to die. No, I ain't scared to die. I don't want to die, though. Would you say your life's in danger on a daily basis? Yeah. Yeah, my life's in danger on a daily basis. I won't lie to you. I grew up in Chicago off of 63rd of St. Lawrence. Nice neighborhood, Westwood Line, you know. It's like one of the most famous neighborhoods in Chicago. What's it famous for? Gangs, you know, the the negative to y'all, but it's positive to dudes like me who get to make it out. People who come from where I come from, if they made it out, that's positive, but the real focus on the negative about our neighborhood type shit. But you know, it's like drill rap. That shit was invented in our neighborhood, stuff like that, you know. And when you just said um, people who made it out mm -hmm. and people who didn't, what do you reckon the percentage of people who don't make it out? What's, who don't make it out? Yeah. About 80%, 90%. I give 95% of people. I think 5% make it out. If that, I think that I'm probably pushing the limit. It's like, you know how the top of the population is like the top one percent of the population is being there. It's like that top percent of be lucky enough to make it out or work hard enough to make it out. Everybody else get caught in the mix, die, go to jail, one year. And Dutch, what was your education like growing up in Chicago? Uh, it was decent beyond all the you know gang fights and stuff like that. Kids had to go through. You know, other than that, education was all right. I failed, dropped out, went back, got my diploma. Went to college for a couple months. I went to school for anthropology, trying to be an archaeologist. So education was all right. And then you started rapping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. And how's that going? I was going decent. It's just doing decent. It's being on the side of the field I'm on. Is, I'm not going to say it's easy as it is for most dudes to come or dudes that's from the other side of the field I'm on. Hey, it's not as easy as they got it, but you know, as a man, it comes with what it comes with. You got to work. Elaborate when you say it's not easy because I'm. On the other side, what do you mean by that? A dude that's from the opposite, it's a, neighbor, a different block from me, that's from the same neighborhood, but they're like two blocks over. He make a nice song, he out of here. You know what I'm saying? Because he already aligned with the the bigger artists in the city type stuff. That makes sense. He already aligned with them, so it'd be easier but with me. I'm opposed to the bigger artists in the city, so I already got like a dark cloud over my head in it, you know? And you're saying that the opposite opposition block is two blocks away from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how dangerous is that on a daily basis? Ha having them so close. It's very dangerous. You got to be, you just got to be prepared and understand because you got to be knowing. Not knowing is the worst thing. Being ignorant to what's going on around you and being oblivious is, it's kind of non-conducive to what you got going on now. So if you ain't paying attention, walking to the store, taking out your garbage. Um, getting groceries from the car, helping your mom to the car with grocery bags and laundry bags, stuff like that is kind of dangerous. So you just got to be, you know. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt your life was in danger in Chicago? Yeah, too many times to count. Give me an example of a story, I guess, where you potentially might have come close to death. Um, my life came close to death. Um... I got too many times. I was, oh, that's a lot of, that's been a lot of occasions. I was, there's been times people have pulled up on me hanging out the window with they, with they 30 clip and shot all they bullets off and missed everything. I'm still here by the grace of God. There's been times I was getting up, going to school early in the morning, me and my homies we meeting up on the block when I was still in high school, like my freshman, I probably was 15. And, and we walking, finna go to the store. A dude walk up on us, we think our homie, he get to shooting at us. He missed everybody by the grace of God. Um, I know it's been times I done too tired from doing shows with my homie FBG Duck and fell asleep in the car and woke up. The ops looking in the car, I'm, they get to shooting all type of shit. I'm still here by the grace of God, didn't get hit. So it's it's a lot of times, it's just, you know, it's part of, it's part of life we live. And then, I guess, after school, into your early 20s, what was you doing in life at that stage? Same thing, working on my music, working on music, trying to, you know, be good. And have you still got aspirations with music at the moment, yeah, currently? Correct, correct, correct. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, uh, Dushy, 
Um, tell me why Chicago is sometimes referred to as Chirac. Um, because at a certain point in time, I think it's still, well, because the war is over, but at a certain point in time, when they came out with the name Chirac, um, Chicago had more murders in the year span than Iraq, the one Iraq of American civilian casualties or American military casualties. Um, as well, uh, Dutchie, what would you say is the biggest regret you've had in your life up until this point? What's the biggest regret I had in my life? I ain't got no regrets. I ain't got no regrets. Everything I did uh, made me who I am today. It shaped me to the man I am today. Do you ever wish you never took this path and I guess had that, I guess, quote quotation marks, normal life, a normal job? Yeah, it's a the average person do you, do you wish you i guess do you wish your life you do, wasn't living this life where i guess you always got to constantly be looking out and you or would you rather have had that normal life yeah no nah, i mean i don't wish i had a normal life but it'd be sometimes i'd be like damn i wish say like when my family go out to eat for graduations and birthdays and shit i can't be there because i can run into anybody well if i can everybody i know the risk that's going on i can't have nobody in the dark that's around me you know i don't want nobody in the blind so Certain things I got to miss out on because of who I am, where I'm from, what I do, you know. Other than that, I don't really be. It's just life. I got to look over my shoulder. I got to look over my shoulder. Would you say safe Chicago is safe for tourists to visit? Would it be Would it be safe for me to walk through 63rd? To walk through 63rd? On my own. Yeah, it'd be safe for you. Because nobody going to... The neighborhood has become gentrified now, so it's like, it's like a mix. It's a diverse crowd of people, so they think that you're one of the college students from the college, from the college, a couple blocks a mile away. So you'll be kind of cool. Now, if you in a Rolex on planes, ain't not like a crazy thing. That's another story for you. Somebody don't like, like, he's a mark. Let's get him, you know. And it's, I was hearing this when I was speaking to other people. It said. Oftentimes, when you come into these blocks, you need to check in. Is that really the case? I don't, I don't, I don't want to make it sound like no California check in, like shit like that. But it depends on who you is, and as well, because my viewers may not know what check in means. What would that actually mean? I don't, I don't know, because they don't. Like, in Chicago, you can't really check in because. Man, I'm so sorry about that. In Chicago, you can't really check in because it's still on. In Chicago, you can't really check in because everybody got problems with everybody. So you can go check in with some guys from O Block, but the guy was two blocks over from O Block trying to kill O Block. So when they see you with O Block, it was the it defeats the purpose. You see what I'm saying? Or you go check in with the that's a two O Block. O Block numbers like it defeats the purpose. There's no checking in because everybody bickering with everybody. Type stuff. Now you can go link up with these people and kick it, but like checking in on some Cali shit, I think that's like extortion or some shit. Like, so let's just say, hardly speaking, if I went to Chicago mm -hmm. and I went to Old Block and I was speaking to people and then I went to 63rd to speak to people, would that be a problem? Nah, because you, um, you doing, you know, you put making content. Now, nah, it depends on what you're doing. If you instigating and stuff like that, trying to add the fuel to the flame, or if you really just out here trying to document and see how people's life is and living, then that's a different thing from trying to, the guys over there said, fuck, woo doo 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 Shit like that, you know? As well, uh, Dutchie, what would you say is the worst memory of your life? The worst memory of my life? I don't know. I couldn't see the thing is, I've been through a lot of my life, so I can't really just say I got one single bad memory. I lost a lot of friends, and I've been through a lot of traumatic situations. I lost family members, grandparents, aunties, and shit like that, so I don't. I just think I got a high life, but I got a good life too, though, at the same time. Mm. And what's the most extraordinary, unusual thing you've ever witnessed inside Chicago? Ex unusual? I don't, I think this is like Grand Theft Auto. Ain't nothing unusual. Look, it's anything goes out. You will see some crazy things here. You just got to be in the norm, in the norm. Like, I don't know, Chicago is different. But I, I, I reckon that's everywhere, though. Everywhere got a good side and then uh, the belly of it, you know. And what was interesting, before I met you for this interview, I realized you, you was pretty much covered. 
like un- not unrecognizable, shall I say? Yeah. And is that, I guess, how you have to travel on a day to day basis almost? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So yeah, that's how I gotta travel. And yeah, I guess, do, do you ever want to move out? Yeah, yeah, that's the plan. But I, when I move, I won't like, I can't move nowhere well. It's going to be, well, I got to look over my shoulder. That's the main thing. I want to go somewhere and be comfortable and not like I'm living in Chicago type shit. Because I can move to Atlanta and it's still going to be like I live in Chicago. When you move to Houston, shit still going to be like I live in Chicago. I got to watch everything and everybody. Why is that? So why is it, I guess, the case of you can go so far away but still have the same life? Because in the, the life I live, once you choose a certain path, once you in it, you always in it. So even if you're Chicago and you run into some dudes from Chicago, it's still the same thing going on. It didn't, we didn't take the time out. It's no break, you know? As well, did you tell me about your relationship with Duck? Oh, that's my, that's my brother type shit. That's my brother. I used to live with him, you know, share clothes. That's my, that's my rapper. We did there, started rapping together, you know? All that, that's my man's. And I guess, how did the passing of Duck affect you? Uh, hurt me hard. I, I, I didn't know. I ain't never say long live or RV duck for a long time, probably in just till like recently. Cause in my head, he ain't supposed to be dead. So I was like a nigga living through me, but now I just finally came to terms with it. Like rest, get your rest, bro. You know? And you, it's interesting that you said that, well, it's not interesting. It's a fact that drill music started in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, what what's your opinion on drill music, I guess, aggravating violence and murders? Drill, the violence and murders was going on not like before we even started making music. So it really wasn't like a, it really, to us, it was just music. But to everybody else that was seeing it, it was seen was like, once they make a song, somebody get killed or some shit. But like, somebody was getting killed before the songs even came out. People was getting shot and killed. But now that I see like other native cities and shit be doing the drill music and people done, I'll be paying attention to it like, they gotta chill. And what's your opinion on UK drill music? <laughs> you trying to troll me. Uh, although I bet they actually be too hard for me to understand. I don't know. I've seen the couple of them on TikTok, I think Central C or some shit like that. I've seen them life and doing nothing. So, oh, the big. Stocky nigga, I can't even think of that. Um, as well, Dutchie, can you explain the meaning behind the gang signs that are thrown up by people from South Chicago? Like, what what, what, would you, what, what signs would your gang be throwing up? Most gangs is, anytime you see people from Chicago throwing shit up, nine times out of ten, they disrespect somebody's gang. So, like... But would they, what would they, uh, a gang sign from your street be? So, what, what would that be? The gang's not from my street. And what would that look like? Which one is like millions of gang signs? It'd be, over time, it, it go from this to that, to that, to this, to this, to that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, this is what? Then you trying to be real federal on the internet. From from my understanding, uh, yes, uh, people can get killed for throwing up gang signs. Yeah. Like, I guess... To the average human, that's insane. That if you do a certain shape with your hand, that it would offend someone to the point they'd want to kill you. Yeah. Can you see why that why that would be, I guess, crazy to the, the general public? Oh, I, I, I mean, that's from a, from a, from from other people's perception. Yes, I can see, I can understand that. But from my perception, you can't let nobody disrespect. So, I guess, what kind of emotion does that give you when you see someone dish your gang with a gang sign? Cause it must revolve something to the point if you if they're willing to get to murder these people it, it must cause was it anger hate no nah, because like if somebody drop your gang sign that mean he, then they're saying he in, he 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 into with you right i mean the, 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 I mean, he your op so i mean you tend to he gonna catch you and do you right well you might as well do him first anyway you know what i'm saying i don't know i'm just saying in general don't quote me on that but like i don't know it's like it's so big now that you have new york dudes dropping chicago gang signs and shit and shit like that, so it don't it don't move me how much as it used to move me when I was a kid. How much it did affect me when I was younger. Like I see that I was cracking down, right? You know what I'm saying? That was just y'all don't even y'all just doing shit to do it. And I guess as you get older, um, 
Without that sending, I guess, a bit patronising or condescending, do you feel like there's less importance in those little things, like, I guess, the colour that someone's wearing, the, the way they're wearing the hat? Like, d does it affect you a lot less the older that you get, shall I say? Yeah, to a certain extent. To a certain extent, you got to take it with a grain of salt because everything don't be what it seems. But you can't never let nobody disrespect you at the end of the day, no matter what. As a man, not even a game room, as a man, whatever you stand on, you got to stand on that and stand for that. So if somebody disrespects that as a man, you got to show them that you stand on what you stand on. No matter if it's being a gang member, no matter if you always want to write books and be a op, you stand on that. You know, somebody disrespect that. I don't know what to the what extent you would take somebody disrespecting you or what, how far you gonna go along back with it, but shouldn't let nobody disrespect you as a man or what you stand on. And what's the mis mi uh, biggest misconception of Chicago? Because what we be hearing on the news, yeah, that's the biggest misconception that Chicago is just all bad. Like I seen. Andrew Tate was like, who the fuck would want to live in Chicago? That's bad in Chicago, but that's pretty much the the ghettos of Chicago. Now, it do spill over to downtown Chicago's and the good neighborhoods and the most uh, prominent neighborhoods sometimes, occasionally, but most times out of 10, it's in the bad neighborhoods. And the way Chicago set, it, set up is really, how can I say this? It's segregated. So, like, the neighborhood is a big difference. Like, it's not too many police riding around here. Like, if I was in my neighborhood, I would have seen 20,000 police already, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it's segregation, so. Was there police everywhere in South? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, every block. So if I was to visit South, I'd literally see police left, right, and center? Correct. Instantly. As soon as you get out the expressway, the highway, you will see them. As well, how do people from South Chicago feel about tourists visiting? Do they feel any shape, way, or form about that? Um, 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 I think most people want people to know that Chicago is a beautiful city because it's really nice. Uh, it's it's nice you go. I don't know. I don't know. It's it what people do when they tour, when I mean, they be tourists. Is you out here agitating and aggravating and instigating and stuff, or is you out here just enjoying yourself? You know what I'm saying? Because it, it's nice, beautiful nightlife. You know, got the... Um, I don't know. Chicago is just a beautiful place. I think tourists should come, but you got to know where to go and the um, where to stay at. The radius, not to travel outside of. You need to stay inside a certain vicinity. And did you watch um, is it Trap Laws video recently that he? Like, I'm watching that weird shit. Um, as well, I guess. Did you ever have or ever have any communication with Von? Or did you ever cross paths, or so? We went to high school together. What, did you have a, a friendship at high school at all? No, nah, he no, nah, he used to be with um BD. He's from Killerwood or some shit like that. But he used to be with the niggas I used to be with fucking with. So even from school, it was oppositions. Yeah, he used to be with the oppositions in high school. He went all the way like I don't know. To us, when we was in high school. He was from a whole nother neighborhood, like where the daddy them from type shit. He just f shorty them type shit. And as years go by, he wasn't from over there. He with shorty them type shit, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. As well, uh, do she? Probably hear words on Twitter, so I'm back and forth. Back in like 2013, 2014, when people used to be arguing on Twitter, beefing and shit like that. How many friends have you lost, lost to this lifestyle? I lost count a long time ago. To be honest with you. Close friends, probably five. Super close. Or like or like my brother's type shit, probably five, but like friends, just I lost way more than I can count. And have you ever done any time in prison yourself? No, nah, I, I went I beat my case. I went to trial and beat my case. What was the case? Um uh, police said I shot at them. And you beat the case, yeah? Yeah. How long ago was that? 2012, around the time all the drill stuff was popping. That's why I went like super in the mainstream with it because I was in jail on house arrest and shit like that. And what's your plan with your music moving forward? Uh, Just to show everybody I'm the GOAT. It's the shit I'm the GOAT who really the GOAT to this shit, you know what I'm saying? That's my plan, just like show and prove. That's the only thing I can do at this point. I gotta I gotta keep this shit going for my homies and them that die, you know? I uh, yeah. had the same dream I got. So I still got to keep fighting for it. 
keep pushing for attack ain't no more. As well, in South, can you talk to me about the racial diversity? Because every time I guess I'm watching a video, I'm only seeing black people. Mm -hmm. And is that the case in South? It's just black people, or mainly black people. Like every time I've watched a video, Old Block, 63rd, I've never seen any other person unless it's the, per unless it's the person who's no, recording. No, no Mexicans, none of that. There's no Hispanics in there, and I never will because Chicago is segregated. It's only only time you see like a diverse section of Chicago is when it's on the borders of the neighborhood. So like, it's the white people neighborhood and it's the black people neighborhood at the edge of the borders. That's where the people converse at. But like, you go deep, ain't no white this people, ain't no black this way. Even with like Hispanic neighborhoods, if I get caught in the Hispanic neighborhoods after dark, even since I was a kid, my whole life, you always know that. It don't matter what you is, they're gonna write up as Eugene. You can be anything. You can be black or something. You can be a fucking black stone. You can be whatever. And they're gonna get out on you. It's like, I don't know. Chicago different. It's different. You can't, you just gotta know, like, uh, I can't go in that neighborhood. And since you like kids, white people neighborhoods, you don't, go, you don't get caught over there after dark. The police will fuck you up too. And as well, what's people's perception from Chicago of people from the UK? Because often, I guess at one point, it was always, they drink tea, they're sweet, they're soft. Is that still the case? I don't know about sweet and soft, man, but you know. <laughs> uh, I don't know, they say people in the UK be getting down or not. I mean, they been getting down, but they say they say people in the UK can't have no pipes. Y'all can't have no guns. That's crazy. That's crazy. As well, um, Dutchie, bit of a powerful question. Would you say you're scared to die? Well, I'm scared to die. Nah, I ain't scared to die. I don't want to die though. I still got so much to accomplish, so much to do, so many goals. But scared to die? At this point, nah, I ain't. But I don't want to die. I refuse to die right now at this point. I still got so much. Would you say your life's in danger on a daily basis? Yeah. Yeah, my life's in danger on a daily basis. I won't lie to you. And it's not because I got, like, me and whatever I got going on with the I'm opposed to, but it'd be like, the fanboys because I'm in opposed to. I can be over here, some it could be a random ass ain't got shit to do with what I got going on, but he so fanned out about the ops or some shit like that, he try to do it to me just to get some grounding points, you know? Just some cool points. And that's just how, that's how I usually be, though. Do you reckon there'll ever be an end to this gang warfare that's going on at the moment? It's set up to be like this. It ain't, you know, man. As long as the people who set the shit up to be like this in control, or the whole thing, it can't end. Do you reckon there could ever be a unification with everyone in, in SAF? A unification? Like I was saying to you earlier, I feel like everyone who I spoke to, some may have been up, some may have been friends, mm -hmm. but everyone who I spoke to, I guess, is super cool. And it's, to me, it's mind blowing just because someone was born two blocks away that there might be a chance that one day that. They may murder you, or you may murder them, just because they live on two blocks away. Yeah. I mean, people do be cool, be nice guys, and all that shit. But you know, if I was to beat up your sister, me and you fight, now I kill you. Your little brother, he's gonna always want smoke with me. You know what I'm saying? And his son gonna feel the same way because that nigga killed my uncle. You know what I'm saying? That nigga beat up my auntie, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't be seeing the unification thing. I don't see it. And and you know, do you think it's it's bigger than this? Like, do you reckon it's a case of the American government keep people within these areas, keep keep um, yeah, keep them in these low poverty areas, have these violent music going out, and I guess it, yeah, paint some sort of picture. And I guess it's almost like this. The surroundings are made for you. If, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. And I guess that's why you're living like that life. Yeah, that's what I say. It's the system. It's, like, it's set up to be like this. But surely, I guess, if people are aware of that, then I guess that unification, in, in, in my opinion, like, has there ever been a case of where to a point where you were ops or some opposition gangs within South Chicago have decided, you know what, let's just leave this alone? So like you said, the, the picture's much bigger. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Because it's, I know in my heart of heart that it's way, way deeper than what me and other dudes from literally a block or two over got going on with each other. But I'm 
as I look back and think about it, only time people do the unification thing is when they get 30 and 40 years old, 50 years old. That's when everybody die out and go to jail and it's just the last of the Mohicans. And everybody trying to raise their kids, meet grandparents and shit like that. But when people young, they no, not me, but that's how everybody feels, you know what I'm saying? Not me per se. I'm just saying, you know, that's a stuff shit. Especially got kids and got got shit to lose. How I'm gonna look letting you kill my people and I'm on the internet hugging. Like we friends and shit. Would you say it's almost I guess too far deep now to ever be a reversal? Yeah, yeah. I would say that, but I don't know. I don't know. I think I think only time will tell. I think only time will tell, but at some point between everybody dying off and go to jail and people having kids and becoming fathers, grandfathers, as you get older and you start having things to live for, other things that's real priorities, not this the bullshit that we that we got caught up in that we kids that turned into be real life, you see what I'm saying? But like real life shit now, but like buying houses and taking care of your whole family and shit like that. Thought I gotta, you know. I guess it's if if there was ever room for change and for this ever to happen, it'd be people like yourself who have the ability to influence the next generation. Yeah, yeah, but I think the next generation are already fucked. I ain't gonna lie. Like, what makes you say that? Because when we was kids, and I was like, when we were like 14 and shit like that, and 13 and 12, and we was playing with fucking BB guns and pellet guns, and then we started playing with revolver guns with 22s and shit. But now these little kids playing with clocks with switches and shit. They, I already fucked they when they 15, 16, they then slid with a switch and shot the whole block and hit two innocent people. Killed <laughs> niggas already. So they already what you do as you do certain things, you can never go back. Because you know what you capable of, you know what you did, so you know what the next man capable of and what the next man can do to you once they catch you down, but so you never wanna get caught down. You never wanna you know. And as well, what would happen if you walk through old block old block in the middle of the day? I've been a I walk through that. Should I always be walking through that bitch in the middle of that? I'll be low low, man. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll be a killer. That's my block. I wrote my name in the semen and I'm back. So there'd be literally no consequence if you it was to walk through that. I niggas don't pay me. I just told you that's my block. I've been walking through that whole block. I've been that, that, that's my block. I'm from over there. And you still and you yourself, um what was it? I'm sorry, I'm on my phone. And yourself, do you still have, I guess, hatred towards old people from old block? I ain't got hatred in my man. I ain't got enough hatred in my heart for nobody. I do I have differences in people, that was another but hate is a crazy word. I don't hate nobody. Hate is a strong word, you shouldn't use that. Even like niggas who was like I never hated them. I, that's my boy. But I catch you though, it's cracking, you know? It's my boy, but when I see you, I perceive you. You gonna see me, we gonna see each other, but you my boy though, you know? It wasn't ever like no hatred, I'm dying inside type shit. Where do you think you'll be in five years? Well, I think I'll be in five years. I don't, I don't, I don't think like that. To be honest with you, I live my life on them. Not to say I'm playing stuff out, but I write my goals down, and everything I need to do, or what I'm trying to get to, or what I'm trying to succeed to. I write it down, and I, every day is wake up, do what I gotta do, scratch something off my list, and make it to the next day. And it's usually not even the next day, it'll be the next significant day. So birthdays, Christmas, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Memorial Day, holidays, um, shit like that. Every month is something. So if I make it just to that day, I'll be decent. So I'm never really thinking five years. I'll be focused on now because five years, I'm, I'm, I'll be lucky if I make it past today. You know what I'm saying?